do you have a designated workspace for your business? I feel called to talk about this in this moment because it hit me like a ton of bricks. Look at this. I got this little blow up chair for like 30 bucks or something on eBay and it's nice down here. So I'm going to sit on it. Ah, there we go. And I'm going to ask you, are you frustrated and pulling your hair out because you don't have a designated man cave or work space? I guess if you're a woman, a woman cave. But if you don't have a designated workspace where you can do prepare quotes and proposals and do paperwork and pay bills, what's up, Ryan? Then you could pull your hair out if you're living in small quarters um, with your family and you're trying to work at the kitchen table, maybe while like a baby is crying and your wife is asking you for something and the phone is ringing and animals want you to take them outside and feed them and then there's chaos all around you and you're pulling your hair out. Thank you for 50,000 subscribers. I couldn't have done it without you. I should make a 50,000 sub video. Single and you have an office. So for those of you in the comments who have your own workspace and you have your own office, you have a 3,000 square foot warehouse now. What up though? Yeah, see, so if you're new or you don't have an office or at least a place where you can work and maybe you live in a small apartment or a mobile home or maybe a very small house where you have no place or no basement where you can work, pulling the trigger on maybe a tiny little office or a workplace or maybe even splitting an office with a friend who's a contractor, a couple hundred bucks a month could be the move that changes everything for you because I study neuroscience and psychology because I have a lot of ADD and anxiety and frustrations myself. I have not checked into pro landscape yet. This was like, what was this? Just yesterday? But thank you. Oh, Matthew. Yeah. So when I rented out, leased my first office, which I still have today after all this time, I was so scared when I went in there that I was shaking while I was signing my name and I knew I had to do it. Like when you ever go like to like Best Buy five times looking at a computer or laptop that you need for your business or looking at a piece of and you're like, I need this thing. I'm scared to spend the money, but I know I need it. Th that means you, you need to do it. And when you finally pull the trigger on it and you got that thing or that workplace, you go, oh, because in neuroscience and psychology, like if you have all these distractions, one interruption can take you uh, 20 minutes to get back on task and a full two hours for you to even get back into the flow of what you were doing because you're constantly getting interrupted and distracted. So if you have a quiet workspace, now your productivity quantifies like that. So when I got that little tiny office, did you know that I made an extra just in the first year? I think my landscaping business went up by 20,000 and my internet business went from 175 to 33,000. It's 15 grand more in the internet business. So what's that? 30 35,000 in gross revenue. Pop like within 12 to 18 months. That's not an, and that's not really a lot. I'm not bragging. I, I wish I were a millionaire and I know you do too or whatever. But just because I got an office, so the money that you spend is really an investment in your sanity. And one amazing thing that I realized is whenever I would feel extremely stressed out, I would go to my office and shut the blinds and take a nap on the floor <laughs> with like a little pillow for like 20 minutes. And then I would get up and clear my head. Can I make a video on the CSA? Sure, I will. Um, I would clear my head. And I was, oh, I'm in a nice, quiet office. I don't have any distractions. It's like the sand in the hourglass. When you shake it and it's all over the place, you got to let that thing sit there for a while in complete silence for everything to clear. And now you're in the moment. Ah, now you can look at your calendar. 
You can call back that client. You can make that quote. The very sense of calmness in your voice will close the job, maybe. If you're trying to hide in a corner at home or hide in the bathroom and talk to a customer and you're frustrated, maybe that'll leak out. I'm not that good. I must, I have a ton of anxiety. So I'm not going to, I digress. I'm keep going on and on about this, but I was just thinking I felt very called to make this video that if you really want something bad enough, you can actually get it for a lot cheaper than you think. And always be closing. Telling is not selling. That's awesome. So sometimes, man, I'm chilling right now. Look at this. I'm about to finish this quote. I'm doing proposals right now. And I, I went upstairs and I made some spaghetti. And the wife and I ate some spaghetti with garlic toast and mozzarella cheese. And I put garlic and olive oil in the sauce. Oh, it was so good. So uh, these are the type of videos. If you're interested in doing YouTube by chance, just making a whole lot of content um, will make your channel grow. I was so obsessed with YouTube, I literally couldn't stop it. I was doing it 24-7. I've uploaded probably a 1,000 videos to this channel alone. 1,000 videos. Oh, shut up. You're starving. Oh, dude, you're hungry? Imagine spaghetti dude with the sauce and the basil, like a basil leaf in there, and mozzarella cheese. And then you stick the fork in there, and you pull the spaghetti up, and the, the cheese is stretching, and the sauce is dripping, and the steam comes up. And then you got the crispy garlic toast with the cheese, the three cheese on it. And when you take a bite, the cheese stretches and the steam comes up. <laughs> mm, the big ass anapasto salad with like balsamic dressing. You burnt a whole loaf of garlic bread in the oven and filled the house with smoke. <laughs> We're mostly vegetarian. We don't even eat meat in our house. But uh, sometimes I, I was at the supermarket. Oh, bruschetta with fresh mozzarella. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. About an hour ago. <laughs> You're from Bahamas. What up, though? Did I meet you at the GIE Expo? Don't have super chats? Hmm, I don't know about that yet. For some Chipotle. Dude, I can't eat Chipotle anymore. It's probably because I get the hot, hot salsa sauce on it. And then I take the Tabasco green and I drip it all over it, dude. And I'm sitting there with my face burning off. I was literally in Chipotle with my wife a couple weeks ago. And I was running to the bathroom blowing my nose. And we got in an argument in Chipotle because I kept running to the bathroom. She's like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, it's so hot. It's so hot. It's an excuse. You just don't want to talk to me. I'm like, I'm telling you, it's the, yeah. Tacos with frickin' uh, sour cream and guacamole on them. And you, you take a bite of the taco and it crunches. And a little bit of the filling falls onto the plate. You're like, nope, put it back on, bitches. Uh, my family is Czechoslovakians and Greeks. And Kelfis means... Knock on wood, he who has a pot belly. And all the men in my family, the old, uh, my father and uncles, all have pot bellies. Hot water takes capsin off your tongue. That's awesome. You know what's amazing? You could. Oh, this is my pillow. This is from a bed set we have. And now I just. I actually got a blow up mattress down here. So when I get home from work, I can lay and um, uh, meditate for a half an hour before I go upstairs to change channels cleanly between work and home. Raviolis with garlic bread and cheese and salad for dinner tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Beer belly. You're based out of DeWitt, Michigan. Your landscape business is growing fast. That's amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Buying equipment. As long as you're getting the jobs. Hey, hey. 
I don't know why I'm so happy right now. I feel like I'm literally in bliss. Dr. Um, not David R. Hawkins. Van, uh, Man Search for Meaning. The, that doctor who was in the Nazi concentration camp. He's a clinical psychotherapist, psychologist. Dr. Van, if you know his name, let me know. Tony Robbins talks about him. He said... Uh, Stephen R. Covey's talked about this. Between stimulus and response, you have the freedom of choice of how you're going to choose how you feel about something. You had lamb and pastuccio yesterday. What's that? Oh, for Greek Easter? What was I up to today? Monday is business administration day. So do paperwork and phone calls and uh, managing the whole administrative side and banking and paying bills, all that on Mondays. So I'm, I'll be up to like past midnight doing that. Is still worth the money or should I save some on Echo? Echo has come a really long way. Their new equipment is really good. It starts up the first pole. It weighs a little bit less than Echo and you can beat the shit out of it and it won't blow up. But still is more expensive and has, this is just my opinion, and the parts are made out of, like, solid metal or something. And you can, it seems to not, it has more balls out horsepower, put it that way. It's it's just stronger stuff. Echo, it seems like still has, a like, more, I'm going to keep going. I think they're both good now. <laughs> can I come with you for a day next week? Um, no, because when I'm at work, I'm so damn focused, I wouldn't be able to talk and I would probably come across as an asshole because all I would be doing is working and not talking because I have a limited time. Otherwise I would, or you could be the camera guy. Yeah, you could be the camera guy. You're almost through rich dad, poor dad. What books would you recommend? I would say read every single Rich Dad book you can. Spend like $300 on all of his books and just buy them all and read them all because they're all amazing. The Richest Man in Babylon is amazing. If you're on a Robert Kiyosaki kick, I would go from there to... Oh, I could pull out my other phone and just start going down a list of books right now. Brian Tracy, Eat That Frog. That's a good one too. Still is it, bro. What do you do? Full landscape from scratch, hardscape, masonry, arborist? No, so I don't cut grass. We do mainly landscape maintenance. So I do tree trimming. We climb trees and we trim trees all the time. I do ornamental tree trimming. Trimming, shaping, thinning, pruning, sculpting, and elevating Bradford pear trees, ornamental trees, crab apple trees, um, magnolia trees. Um... And then we also do landscape maintenance. So we're trimming shrubs, we're weeding garden beds, we're edging them out, we're putting down mulch, we're laying down uh, felt and putting down uh, decorative stone and uh, putting small boulders and rocks and planting shrubs and carving out landscape beds and putting in black diamond and metal, metal edging and planting topiary shrubs and trees. So yeah, we do landscaping. We do landscaping, but we don't... Um, uh, do actual hardscape. I've done a couple patio walkways and I made good money off of it, but something about it, I just like hated it. It's probably because I don't have a process down. Be Obsessed or Be Average by Grant Cardone. Yes, that's an amazing book. Uh, his book, The Closer's Survival Guide or something like that, that one's good. And then his other book, Sell or Be Sold and Be Obsessed or Be, uh, Obsessed or Be Average is an amazing book. I love Grant Cardone. Gary Vaynerchuk. Yep. Stay up to date with him. I'm reading uh, Crushing It right now. I'm on like chapter five. Read all of Gary Vaynerchuk's books. Uh, Crush It. Uh, the Jab, 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 Right Hook. Ask Gary V. And now Crushing It. Those are all good books. I read Jab, 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 Right Hook from cover to cover, literally sitting in the bookstore for three and a half hours straight. I didn't move. I read the whole book right in the bookstore. It was funny. 
In, are you my into click funnels yet? Yes. Uh, I've taken a lot of uh, Russell Brunson's courses and stuff. I even have his perfect webinar series right here. I've got all of Russell Brunson's books. I've read all of Russell Brunson's books, uh, Expert Secrets and Dot Com Secrets. Read those. And I also am a founding member of New Kajabi, which is like the number one competitor to ClickFunnels. So I have uh, optimized like funnels and I'm running Facebook ads to uh, uh, sales pages to email autoresponder sequences that back end with like a now getting into Facebook retargeting and studying all the conversion and metrics and data across it to find out what my ROI is when you put this amount of ad spend in, what do you get on the back end versus the front end with a tripwire offer to a core offer to all that shit. Obsessed with it. How do you find customers if you want to start construction work? I don't know. Google ads. Advertise it, do it, and take super high quality pictures of it and put it all over your website and on the internet and assign the side of your trailer and put like construction patios and then get in contact with um, uh, builders and anybody else and other landscapers. Get Join a business networking group and tell everybody that you do landscape construction and build patios and steps or all that stuff. And as you start to get your name out there and do good work and you keep promoting and taking pictures and videos of everything you're doing and showing it, then if you walk around in a Superman suit all the time, people are like, oh, he's the guy in the Superman suit. You know what I mean? You literally just manifested it out of nothing. You're going to read The Richest Man in Babylon? That's a good book. you got to read it twice. It's a beautiful book. It's such an amazing book. There's a part in that book where the kid goes off. He makes money. He actually makes money. And then he goes to invest it and somebody rips him off and he loses all his money. And he goes back to the wise man. He's like, you didn't investigate before you invested? That guy was a thief. He took your money. He's like, oh, now you have to go out and make your talents, your money, make money for you. And then by the end of the, the book, he becomes a rich man. But it takes like a whole lifetime. And it's an amazing book. Oh, you have gray hair now too, my friend? Yep. I just saw an old video of me from three years ago. And I was like all tan and shit and like younger. with And I had a nervous breakdown. Well, I wouldn't say full-blown nervous breakdown because that's kooky shit. In 2014, 15, 16, and 17. <laughs> Every single year I have a nervous breakdown. Somewhere around... I'd have to say around like November, I'm so burned out from this business, so overworked, going on like you work six months straight, sleeping five hours a night, you know nothing but just working and answering phone calls and doing paperwork and working your ass off. Like you get to the point where you're, you actually, you become uh, like incarcerated, like it, it fucks you up. And then you start eating junk food, you stop caring, you stop shaving and you're fighting with your family all the time. So me, every like November, I'm not, I'm trying to prevent this now. I go, I get into a sick, dark place where I literally lay in bed for days on end. I come home from work. I don't even shower. I just lay in bed and I stare at the fucking wall or look at my phone in total depression. It's, it's, there's times I want to completely just dump this entire business and do something else. But I think the problem is not the business. It's with me. It's I, I'm not ready to, the fear is we're afraid to step up and take on, if, I, if I'm already getting depressed and, and I can't do all this, how can I do more? What do you mean step up and do more? I can't do it anymore. <laughs> so you, you develop these stories in your head of what that means. And it's kind of like a mouse in a maze with a piece of like cheese. And every time he goes towards the cheese, he gets sapped, like electrocuted. So he goes here and he gets electrocuted. He goes, and every which way you turn, you're getting electrocuted to the point where you're just sitting there twitching. Because your reality starts closing down in on you. So I think that like, <coughs> I know that was some real deep shit, but I'm just trying to be real as fuck, bro. <laughs> That's just me. Gray hairs, bro. Lawn Care Millionaire is the shit. I love Lawn Care Millionaire. He has this one video. 
He says, every spring you say, this year is going to be different. This is going to be the year. He says, and then you get into the business and then it's the same old shit over and over again. And he's like, it feels like your business is like a broken record. I love Lawn Care Millionaire. I went on a Lawn Care Millionaire binge for like eight days straight once plowing snow. I listened to him like, I listened to him for 32 hours straight. I remember Till I literally couldn't listen to him anymore. His voice just sounded like I was like stuck in a prison and his voice was on a loudspeaker torturing me. Because <laughs> he's a genius. You know what I love about Lawn Care Millionaire, this Jonathan Potoshnik? Um, his composure, dude. If you ever meet him in person too, he's just this calm, chilled. He's a good looking guy too. He's got his black hair slicked back. Yeah, he doesn't even appear to have any gray hair. And he's just chilling. He's like, yes, I am Lawn Care Millionaire. And I own like 12 companies and I'm the shit. And this dude is like, I don't know what, but he, you know, behind the scenes, I'm sure he's got a lot of stress and a million things going on that we couldn't even imagine. But he's so cool, calm and collected that, you know, that's one of the first things that I say when I meet a person like him. I'm like, dude, you're like the Eben Pagan of the landscaping industry. And, you know, you just shake their hand and you say, bro, I aspire to have my act together like you do one day i think that people like that it's their composure and their energy field that we say you know i want to be like that did we start the season yet oh hell yeah we're totally already totally busy right now have you ever had a customer ask you about a fruit bearing tree that stopped giving fruit what would you recommend well jesus <laughs> When the fig tree stopped bearing fruit, Jesus cursed it and it w uh, withered up and died. <laughs> but Jesus was the ultimate boss, so I have no idea. I I'm not a certified arborist, but uh, Rico Suave is. Uh, Daniel Marava, that guy's amazing. Remember his name, Rico Suave. He's in our community. This dude would know the answer to that in a second. I like... That about replacing parts on Echo Epiphany. Just a nut, a screw, or two in a quick fix. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wade. Epiphany. Yeah. I currently work in construction doing decks and fences, and we get subcontracted out all the time from landscaping companies to build stuff when they're doing remodels and new construction. Oh, for sure, bro. You can make so much money just being a subcontractor. If you hook up with the right company who's busy as shit, you can literally just go out and do all the jobs and just collect checks and just bill them, and you don't even have to deal with the customers, and you could be swapped busy. How do you give up too many carbs? Just don't eat anything that's the color white for 30 days. So don't eat bread, don't eat rice, don't eat pasta, and starve to death. <laughs> It's because it's a simple carbohydrate and it has a high, it's a high glycemic index. So when you eat bread, it just converts to sugar, which has an acid ash, which is like low pH. And then the the high lipid fat content, it's, I'm not like a medical therapist person, but I've studied this shit. <coughs> um, customers on Craigslist suck. Uh, yeah, you think? They're basically calling you up. Customers on Craigslist call you up. They say, hey, I don't care who you are or what you do. I, I, I don't give a crap about you, but how cheap can you come and work for me for? That's what they're saying. Time to hire someone to take the nervous breakdowns. Yes, absolutely. I like how you challenge me, GP. I really do. I love it because when I get off of these live videos, I think about the things you said specifically because you're not... Uh, saying yes to me because I'm on YouTube with 50,000 subscribers, blah, blah, blah. You're actually challenging me. That means that you really care about me. But don't everybody start ganging up on me. <laughs> I can't repeat what you said, JP. <laughs> Craigslist customers smoke cigarettes. Hey. Craigslist will give you the breakdown. 
Have you ever tried going to therapy counseling, Keith? Uh, no. My friend Coach Rob is a uh, he's a, a actual life coach, and I call him when I'm like going through shit. I could call this dude up, like totally perplexed and total freaked out and anxiety, right? And he'll start talking, and within like four or five minutes, I'm like. just chilling <coughs> he calls them thought worlds but yeah i believe everybody needs therapy and everybody could, could could benefit from therapy and it's time to end the the bad uh taboo about therapy oh you're messed up you have a mental illness dude everybody's fucked up and everybody could benefit from therapy especially me <laughs> Seasonal depression. Look into light therapy. Oh, hell yeah. Lawn care makes no money. Delegating responsibility helps, but it's hard to find people that's worth a damn. Yeah, the last guy who worked for... Mm, I can't say, but even just found out bad news... No, it was it was one guy who worked for me. Anyways, never mind. Yeah, Troy Danner. Oh, beautiful! It's the things that you don't know that stress you. So it's the competency progression model. So. When you don't have any competence in something and you don't know about it, you're not educated and you haven't done it, then you can get really stressed out about it unless you start small and take it bite size chunks and do it. And then once you become competent at it and you become unconsciously competent, which means you could just do it with your eyes closed, it becomes normal to you. So within your sphere of influence, it's just something that you just do and it's normal. You don't even question it. And now somebody else is looking at you like, how the hell do you do that? Like, it's normal. But the things that you don't know how to do yet that you want to do, other people are, you're looking at, like, how do you do that? And it stresses you out. But to them, it's normal. So that's why I'm learning it's important to drill really deep on something versus going wide and trying to be like a jack of all trades. And I've made the mistake of doing that in a lot of ways. Probably why I got so much fucking anxiety. What do you like better, Keith? Landscaping or window cleaning? <laughs> you know what's crazy when we do window cleaning i'm like this is so cool we're literally getting paid to squeegee and water fed pole windows and averaging uh 100 bucks an hour for two guys so 50 dollars per man hour and then i'm like i can't stand this i have anxiety in these people's houses i want to get out and do some landscaping so we get out and we start landscaping and trimming trees you know and then after doing that for a while, I'm like, ugh, I'm filthy. I'm covered in dirt and disgusting. I want to get in a nice air-conditioned house and clean some windows, dog. And I think that I like them both the same and I hate them both the same. It's true. <clears throat> Keith, why no kids yet? Because I said, I've been talking to my wife a bit lately about kids. I'm like, listen, we have to... Get on our grind more. <coughs> Excuse me, like we're not already. And we have to get to the next step and get out of this condo and get a house so we can paint a baby room. Or we don't know what color to paint it yet. But so we can have a baby room so I can knock you up and we can have a baby. So, because it's kind of weird. Like this morning our little Yorkie dog was lying in between us in bed this morning. And we were petting the dog and it was laying there on its back. with us like, this is awesome. And... And I'm petting this dog, and we're, like, a little too attached to the dog to the point where it's getting weird. Like, we're now, like, we're in our 30s, and we don't have a kid yet. And it's kind of hitting me. My wife doesn't see it yet, but I'm because I'm 35, and she's, like, 31. And um, now I'm seeing, like, yeah. But why am I afraid to have kids is because of financial reasons, like, when we were kids, we literally waited in the welfare line with food stamps to get, like, canned pork. And um, uh, we almost got taken away by the state and Child Protective Services. And I know that was then and this is now. 
But I'm so afraid of not being able to make it and failure and not being there for my kid. And, and I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm afraid. And I think maybe that might be the very reason why I would be a good dad. I, I know for a fact I would be a good father no matter what. But, yeah, we're almost there. We're going to have kids soon. So soon I'm going to be sitting here making this video with a baby and it's going to be like, <laughs> gonna ruin my whole YouTube channel. Am I a landscape designer? Hell no. I could take a shitty landscape program and like put like some trees and bushes and all that. And I've done that for customers. And um, they go, oh, that looks cool. I'm like, yeah, well, it's gonna be like, you know, 200 bucks. <laughs> I, I've done it for customers and I've sold a couple jobs with it, but I'm not at that level where a landscape design program uh, helps. Probably because it's like, I don't know. Maybe I should. I'm not there, but I'm not a landscape designer. Praise Jesus. Yes, I love Jesus. Jesus is amazing. I lied in bed the other night after like reading the Bible. And I like had this visual. It was almost like a magic mushroom trip where I logically and mechanically understood the whole story of Jesus that like people who don't really, they're not religious, they're like, yeah, okay, you, you know the whole religious story about Jesus. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm, I'm not telling you that, that this is what you should believe. I'm just saying that this is what I've come to believe. And I've struggled with this a long time. I think that it's totally logical. And that it's completely mechanical. That this Jesus guy really was who he said he was. <laughs> Hey Keith, add people who are watching if you're at a job site and the customer neighbor asks you to do something small like a lawn mowing. Do you all charge them like if you were at home or your business? I don't understand that. I don't understand. I'm so sorry. It's the way it's written. My brain's not... Or charge them less. I think I know what you're saying. If a couple customers sign on, I'll give them like 10% off, like a bulk discount. But that's all I can think of. Trick or treat. So are you getting my messages? I'm in California. What's up, Wade? Are you still renting that shared office space? Uh, yeah, so there's like a bunch of offices inside of this huge building and I have a bunch of neighbors. So I've downgraded to a virtual office space. So I have full access to it and I have a mailbox. The secretary collects my mail and does whatever and like a fax and a copy machine and I can get in there and do my work and I love it. It's amazing. Do I have a landscape designer on staff? Hell no, I wish I did. I'm like a small fry guy. The reason I haven't grown my landscape company is I spend too much fucking time on social media and building my internet business. If I wasn't focusing on my internet business and making YouTube videos all the time, my landscape company would be twice the size. You can't, you can't, he who chases two rabbits, both escape. <laughs> I'm not passionate about landscaping to put my life into it. I don't want to see myself doing landscaping in 15, 20 years or own a landscaping company. And if I do, I, I don't want to, um, well, if I do, I don't want to be in it working. I want it to be like automated and using the money to funnel it to other things, you know? I think it's a stepping stone. Oh, you're 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 writing an estimate for 18 foot tall hedge. That's about 15 to 20 trees long. Not sure about price. Yeah, I've done that. Uh, Arborvitae roll hedges that was 20 wrong, 20 long. I think I charged a guy $600, and I was so pissed off because when you're up, you have to like get like a big arborist ladder unless you rent out a lift and get up there, and. What I had to do is lean a ladder against every single individual shrub and take a chainsaw and then cut through it and then throw the pieces down on the ground on a tarp to a guy or take the truck and throw them directly into the truck, whatever's 
And then you have to go back up and shape them all. So this shit takes like all day. So I'm talking like you're looking at like at least a thousand or twelve hundred bucks to do that because imagine like 50, 50 bucks per shrub times fifteen to twenty. <clears throat> Dan Penna's videos? No. That guy sounds cool. I want to check him out. Mobile small engine mechanic? That sounds badass. I would pay for that. I hate fixing my own equipment. Is there any money in cutting grass? I was on the phone with my buddy, Mike, who owns a lawn care company um, just the other day, and he makes really good money. But he said he doesn't have one stop where he's not cutting at least three to four lawns per stop. I worked for the guy, and it sucked balls being the employee because we stopped and we cut grass for two, three hours. Then we do another stop, and we do a whole condo complex. Then we do another stop, and it's eight houses. Then we do another stop, it's three houses. <clears throat> You're literally running your balls off all day. So if you have a high route density, and you see like the guys don't even have to like go to the next subdivision. They're just riding the mower to the next job and just, cha like, I think that you can make good money like that. And if you, have, you know, but I, who the fuck do I know? I cut lawns my whole life, but as a business, I gave away all my lawn care accounts my second year in the business because it was just good to great by Jim Collins. That's a great book, dude. You know, it says to get me out of my rut. And I got to read the book again because I read it and it was so much data and analytics about big companies and why some companies make the leap and others don't. I would like to check it out again. Thank you. <laughs> Amy, Sally, Sal, nobody wants to work for a damn living. I have a revolving door of people who don't give a crap. Yeah, that's the main problem. The main problem with employees is not that they're stupid. They're smart. They're crafty. You can see somebody, uh, <clears throat> when they're having a good day, they will knock your socks off and do amazing things. Like, dude, you're incredible. I didn't have to say a word to you and you did all this. Like, But the problem is they don't care. They don't care. It doesn't matter. People aren't motivated by money as much as you think. They don't give a shit. So that's what I like about what Joshua Latimer talks about, like building a company culture and like having like pizza events and making, you know, and giving them surprise bonuses and all that. Watching you on the TV with the family, please say speedboat is a fart sniffer. Speedboat is a fart sniffer. <laughs> hey, Keith, I just wanted to say thanks for being one of my mentors. As I start my own window cleaning business here in Toronto, Canada. Got any advice on sales? Opening and closing. I don't know. I think that the best thing is to get out and just do it. The more people that you talk to, I think if... It's funny how you can sit there and bullshit with somebody, like a customer during a quote for 20 minutes about something that has nothing to do with the job. And at the end they go, okay, well, where do I sign? It's about like making them like you without being manipulative, you know? And another thing is when I'm with customers, I mean, you might be actually surprised to hear this right now. I don't talk about myself at all. Never. I don't talk about myself. And the only reason I ever talk about myself with a customer is just to add a little bit of value to what they're saying to get them to talk about themselves or their project more. Or just to, to, to create a little bit of rapport and it's right back on them. Like, I don't want them to know anything about me. It's all about them. Yeah, tell me everything. And sign on the dotted line. I need money. Nothing. She thought I was yelling to her. Nothing. I said money, not honey, but I love you, honey. We just ate spaghetti uh, dinner. And um, sometimes my wife would get like sassy. I don't know what it is. And, and I used to like, 
just get all weird and then we'll start like a fight because she's touchy dude she's got that chaldean blood in her like we could be in a fight in two seconds and it's not i'm i'm always quiet she's the one she's so fucking loud dude if i if you're if you're fighting with that woman up there that woman she will raise her voice louder and she'll literally like blah 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 i'm like ah! so you know what i do now i literally grab my 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 woman I fucking pin her against the wall. I said, get over here and give me a kiss. And if she tries to resist me, I'll literally pin her against the wall and I'll start kissing on her neck and I'll grab her ass and I'll grab her hands and I'll pin her against the wall. <laughs> and then she loves it. <laughs> what kind of trailer should I buy? A four by eight trailer? <laughs> That's small as hell. I don't know. You're screwed either way. Because if you buy an open trailer, you can dump. That's where I'm screwed. I got an enclosed trailer, and I got to put all the shit in my truck. I need a dump truck, dog. I've been saying that for, like, years. Every time I get money, I just keep investing it into my internet business because I get more return on my investment <coughs> Excuse me, than putting it into my landscaping business. Oh, that's dope. A custom ramp. Yeah. you. And does anybody ever go on Craigslist obsessing like at 2 o'clock in the morning looking at like equipment and trailers and all that? Like, oh my God, oh my God. Oh, this guy's a fucking idiot. Oh, you think he's going to get fucking $9,000 for this 2002? Yeah, this guy's smoking rocks. Get it. Next. What? $7,000 for that? What? fifteen grand? Oh, look at this one. Oh, this could... Oh, fuck. The motor's blown. Do you ever do that? <laughs> like, And you, you, you get to the point where you know everything that's on Craigslist in your local area. And you become like almost like a crackhead. I can't stand it. I literally have to... Check this out. Check this out. This is called the K safe. I literally got to get back to. If you guys are still on here, give me a thumbs up and say what's up. This is a K safe. Oh no no. So what you do is you set the timer on it for an hour or two, 24 hours, 10 days, it don't matter. And then you put your phones or whatever you want or your drugs in here. I don't do drugs and I don't have any drugs in my house. I'm just playing. But, you know, you put whatever your, 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 you know, your snacks. If you're addicted to Oreo cookies, you put them in there and then you can't get them out. And there's no override. So on Sundays, I put my phones in there for 24 hours. There's no phone Sunday because I got all this shit to do. And then I got all this shit to do. Look at all this shit I got to do. And I'm getting getting some of it done. Okay, what's else? What's this is fun. Okay, um Kids will motivate you to build an empire. I believe you. Wow. JS Landscaping. 13. Badass. How many old ladies hit you up a week on job sites? I don't understand. What does that mean? Old ladies hit you up a week. I don't know what that means. I'm literally in my first year. just spent four hours pulling tarps of leaves into the back of my pickup with sideboards. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, you'll never be prepared to have kids, I'm sure. Yes, praise Jesus. So happy you know the Lord. For sure. I'm not, I'm not blinking because I'm like lying. I'm blinking because my eyes burn. I had this epiphany about Jesus and I was running around the house with the Bible in front of my wife like a schizophrenic saying, and he said to Peter, and he said, I got this on my I Am Ability YouTube channel, and he said, get behind me, Satan. And I was like freaking out. She's like, you tripping. Never tell a secret in the middle of a cornfield. Hi. I'm on a live video kick today. I will see you, service industry coach, for 
coffee tomorrow morning, sir. And, um, yes, I am in a live video kick today, and I'm happy I am, because I have barely been uploading anything to YouTube lately. And if you want your YouTube channel to grow, it sucks ass, but you have to sit there, you have to upload a whole bunch of content all the time and be relevant, and... I think that you have to be ups I'm not telling you anything. I'm just saying I'm speaking freely. Uh, it's really scary to sit there and totally be yourself in front of a bunch of people with all your little weird uh, mannerisms and tics and all the things that you're scared for the world to see. You have to be yourself and let it all out. And I think that uh, people can relate to it. <laughs> What's the most subscribers my channel has had? This one, 50,000 and 400,000 views a month this channel was hitting when I was making a bunch of vlogs. Now it's at 223 or 230,000 views right now so far this month. And it'll probably go up to 350 to 400,000 views uh, in a month for the summer. Yeah, yep. I'm reading Sam White Jones about getting work done. You can relate to me, Antonio. <laughs> or do what you said and just have people run it for you. I would love to do that. That's why, like I said, I just talked about this on my window cleaning blueprint channel. It's all about window cleaning. If you haven't seen it, check it out. About... Uh, a friend of mine just called me and he said, dude, I'm not closing any jobs right now because my prices are too high. Well, it's cutthroat season right now. It's cutthroat season in the beginning. But as soon as you get real booked and the customers are calling and they can't get a hold of anybody, then you can raise your prices and now you can make those premiums. So you got to stay like very um, um, <coughs> acutely aware of what's going on in the market with your competition at, in real times at all times so you can inflate your prices and adjust it according to the supply and demand or otherwise you'll book up your schedule with a whole bunch of low profit work or you'll book up your schedule with a bunch of high profit quotes and not close the work and it's this constant like thing it's like it's crazy you know i may be wrong but that's just what my experience has uh, told me the data Thirteen hundred, and you're going to notch and drop a tree because you have room. I notched and dropped a tree back on Wednesday, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, I squeezed it between power lines. It was <coughs> telephone lines and a house and a garage, and I left the meat on the tree, nice and fat, with an open face notch cut out the back and we roped it and then we actually pulled it over instead of dropping it i'm not saying that you don't know what you're doing i'm just saying tree work is crazy bro i only do the trees that i can handle otherwise i ain't doing that shit <clears throat> yeah the yard stop in ocala florida <clears throat> What's my favorite marketing format? Video. What I'm doing right now, all day. The reason I love video, this is my favorite marketing format, because everything I'm saying right now, how many people are on here right now? 71 people? So I make a video four years ago that has 200,000 views. You can say something, it's a time machine. I'm literally bottling up what I'm saying right now into the quantum information holographic. I don't know what this is. It's, it's, it's literally using time travel through means of technology. It's the one to many model. You can make a video that potentially millions of people can see and you only have to say it once. So what if you had 50 videos? <coughs> I fucking have incense. Nag Champa right there over there burning you. That's killing me. <clears throat> but so imagine if you had 50 videos of you building relationships with thousands of people on autopilot and then selling them or closing them and bringing them into funnels and you're sleeping 
while your videos are building relationships with people on autopilot and it's really you. And when they watch a video you made a week ago, they're watching it in real time for them in the now. And because they're watching it, they're feeling and experiencing all these simulated emotions that they're really feeling because they're watching you having the real emotions and getting your message across in the video, but you made the video three days ago. And what do I mean by that is the leverage is now quantum. It's no longer linear. It's no longer linear. It's geometric. I have no idea, Evan Smith, how to get my business off the ground in rural areas, or I would tell you, and I'm not going to lie, I live in a super metropolitan city with billions of houses everywhere, so it's probably a lot easier for me in this area, but I know that where there's a will, there's a way. You could probably market yourself as like the most reliable dude in the area. I don't know. Ooh, you're going to get spurs and a climbing saw? Zach Garvey, you're motivated. You're on that tree shit. My most profitable piece of equipment is the PP800 extendable uh, pruner saw. It's manual. There's no motor on it. You can literally just sit there and trim trees from the ground. We got a job Wednesday for 450, just trimming up a tree, and I don't even have to climb or anything. We'll be in and out in an hour or two. Do I use a CRM? Currently, right now, I use a couple CRMs. I use the new Kajabi CRM. For those of you who don't know, it's a customer relationship management software program that manages your database of leads coming in, your contact information, your flows, your projects, everything. Uh, I use QuickBooks. I use Kajabi. I use another software called GetResponse. I'm thinking about getting on Trello or Service Monster. And then I also use like Meet Edgar. I have a bunch of different ones. How to compete with other 20 other lawn care companies? I don't know. Where do you put your phone on you while you're working? I don't. I leave my work phone in the truck. <clears throat> I have two cell phones. A business, I have three cell phones. I have a business phone, my internet business phone, and then a private flip phone that only my wife has a number two. So when I'm working, I'm just listening to audiobooks. And then when I go in the truck, then I answer and check all my phone calls, or otherwise I'll lose my mind. You bought my book. Thank you. I appreciate it, dog. Recurring services that are less profitable or one-time services that are very profitable. That's genius. <coughs> Excuse me. Ego equals evil. Like a fat kid loves cake. 50 cent? You had spaghetti? <laughs> I'm reading all the comments. What's your internet business? Long care kid says. So my internet business has two components. <clears throat> the one of it, one is Green World Publishing Inc. That is my digital information product business. That's YouTube right now. This is a business. This YouTube channel, it's an actual corporation with its own bank account. And <coughs> uh, the publishing of my, my paperback books is part of the business, which is also um, uh, the publishing of my audio books that I sell online, and then also my online, my internet market, my courses, my window cleaning blueprint course, my landscaping course, my marketing ROI course is coming out soon, and then also have uh, affiliate money coming in from different affiliate sources like ClickBank and other digital information products, and then joint venture affiliates. So my internet business, I have nine different streams of residual income that comes in passively through all these different sources. That's my internet business.
And then the second component of my internet business is the digital media business, which is Calfus Media. And that's where um, I started. I've got one client now and another one lined up right now. We had our first meeting today, but it got canceled because he had a serious issue. But <coughs> that's where I actually take on clients. And I, I design all the marketing and digital media uh, for their business, like building a high-end website with funnels, like click funnels and in building out their entire marketing plan and that's my internet business so like I met like this millionaire dude in Phoenix Arizona a couple weeks ago and I've got to contact him like ASAP and he's interested in uh, basically so he would pay me my fee for that would be at least 12000 but he would fly me out and I would spend a couple days there consulting their whole business on how to do internet marketing You should use that locking box to quit smoking. Yeah, it's called the K-Safe. <coughs> My whole room is filled with smoke right now. If you couldn't do landscaping or window cleaning, what would you do for work? I've never even considered it. Because I've been doing landscaping since I was in diapers, bro. <clears throat> I was bartending when my, I first got married, and that didn't work out too well with the wife. I was in the bar with fucking spiky-ass hair, dude. And, uh, oh, I thought I was the shit. That didn't work out too well. <clears throat> Is it true that the internet info marketing is a saturated business? It's not yet. Between now and 2020 is the golden era. It's the Wild West. You can, it's, this is the Wild West right now. So in 2020, internet marketing and information, and digital information products will be mainstream. That's when the, it's going to drive down. That's when it's going to start getting saturated. Plus, we have 3 billion people in the Eastern world that aren't on the Internet yet that are getting online. So we're in the gold rush right now for uh, <clears throat> digital media. But the learning curve is the problem. The people that are doing it, like I'm doing my Internet business nonstop 24-7. I'm all over it. The stuff that I've learned, I can't even... I have a, a private Facebook group called the Market Your Marketing ROI. Hit me up on there. It's all red. The, the brand color is red. And I talk about insane shit in there that I've learned that's changed my life. Like, look at these. See, all, what is all this stuff? This is all digital information, different stories you can tell. There's a framework and a sequence in which you, in how you communicate the information that you speak so it bypasses the critical mind and people go into a subconscious story mode and then you can sneak the vitamins in with the ice cream and get certain messages across you can use it for evil or you can use it for good i want to use it for good because i love doing it and i love uh helping people <clears throat> come on doggy red bull gives you wings <clears throat> what up dog how do you make postcards off radius bomb uh, you get an account with Send Jim. How much do you pay for Radius Bomb? Was it like 60 or 70 cents per postcard or something? <coughs> the postcards are pre made. You just put your own company information in there, and then you drag uh, the thing over the Google Maps, and then it populates, and then you put in your credit card, and you buy credits, and you drop like 400 bucks, and it goes. <laughs> 400 bucks isn't a lot. You could spend a thousand bucks per hit on that. Oh, you're notching and dropping hedges. Why don't you advertise in Valpac or newspapers for your landscaping or window cleaning business? Um, I don't know. Probably because there's so many different ways to market and advertise. I just haven't gotten to it. Oh, wow, you're getting three to 400 bucks Gary's Garvey's property services per spring cleanup. That's really good at four hours a piece. That's pretty good. I charge 250 per spring cleanup plus a removal fee for a truckload of debris, 60 to 100 bucks. So I'd probably get 250 to 350 per cleanup. 
You gotta go later, Wade. Yeah, I'm about to jump off here too in a minute. A harness. Ow! You fuck! Damn it! She didn't mean to. She just bit my arm. Oh, she's your baby. It's okay. So many comments. What's up, Soapy Steve? Do you get a lot of people like bashing your YouTube videos for landscaping and window cleaning? No. It's surprising me how little hate I get. <laughs> I mean, you can go on forums and find people talking shit about me if you type my name in. Um, There's some people who hate me. And the funniest thing is the people who that I have found who dislike me and talk shit about me, somewhere down the road, I'm going to knock on wood. Do I have wood to knock on? I think that the people that dislike you, sometimes they see something in themselves that they see in you that they don't like about themselves and it makes them feel really insecure and they don't want to face it. <coughs> and some people have tried to contact or reach out to me. If you're still watching now, listen. Um, and I couldn't get back with them and then they went from liking me to hating me because they felt rejected by me. And that hurts me because I really do care. Um, this YouTube channel has ruined my fucking life. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, so I have uh, two to three hundred people a day uh, in uh, across social media trying to contact me, emailing me, calling my phone, texting me, personal messaging me. And there's at least two to three people a day trying to get me into a business venture, trying to be partners, trying to pull me into some type of scheme or marketing thing. There's so many people and I've only got maybe 60,000 subscribers across all my channels. So that's not even a lot. And only at 60,000 subscribers, there are so many people trying to contact me for every single different reason you can imagine that it's completely overwhelming to me and it makes me feel isolated and it's hard. Do I still live with my mom? No, my mom's uh, dead. My mom, uh, she, my mom passed away, unfortunately. It was pretty sad. Did you land the church windows contract? No, I'm actually in the middle of it, quoting it right now. I was eating spaghetti and I made. I turned on this face, this YouTube video, and I got to finish it. I'm halfway done, but it's at twelve hundred dollars just for the skylights. There's thirty two skylights cleaned inside and out. We're either gonna rent a lift or we're gonna put a ladder against a wall and use a skylight. Um, <coughs> excuse me, cleaner from Detroit Sponge, and then I, that doesn't include the uh, hard water stain removal. It's going to be expensive. How do I like my new F-150? I love it, bro. <laughs> it is awesome. I've wanted a new truck my whole life. And my other trucks, every truck I've ever had, every car, I've had 30, something like 30 cars. One after another piece of shit's all breaking down on me. So the only reason I bought a... Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, the only reason I got a new F-150... It's because uh, I didn't want to go spend $15,000 on a used vehicle because I've never had more than 30 something thousand dollars saved at any given time amongst different bank accounts. So unless I'm going to ha unless I have three times the amount of money to invest in something like let's say you've got $30,000, I would never spend over 10000 because I'm like, I don't like risk. Anyways, I'm giving you too much information. But yeah, I got it because I felt like I didn't have a choice. I was desperate. So I went to the dealership, scared shitless. And I drove home with it. I don't give a fuck about having a new truck. But now I love it because it doesn't break down. Well, you should go see the recent Eric Bland one. Because he just heard a bunch of people getting bashed on there. And he's really pissed off. On where? Huh. I gotta check it out what you're saying. 
I like Eric Bland. I was on the phone with him a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> a small little steam cleaner for window cleaning tracks. Let me know how that works. I want to see a video of it before I'm buying it. Because I've tried a few different things uh, with window tracks. And... Everybody's got some great, I'm not saying you, but people have got these great ideas, but I want to see it in action because I've given up with window tracks. Now I'm just raising the price. Is Grandma Kelfis still with? No, she died. She died of dementia, and my grandma and my grandpa died at like the same time. How old am I? I just turned 35 yesterday. Gucci Prada. You own 78 vehicles you've owned? Damn, son. Oh, you got a 2017 Transit? <laughs> do I do landscape construction retaining walls? Hell no. I think I've done like two retaining walls. <coughs> I hated it. <laughs> you just saw his video about window cleaners? Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, let me know, Steve. Come here. Okay, I'm going to jump off here. Thanks for spending this time with me, yo. Who think there is no... As a Christian and a believer in the Lord Jesus, thank you. Greg Campbell. Awesome. Check out my channel, I Am Ability, if you, if you have time and want to, you know. Um... There's one part where I'm reading the Bible, like, freaking out, running around. So I was a confirmed Lutheran as a kid. I had to go to church, like, all the time and do communion and all that. And I had a pastor who grabbed me by the wrist and pulled me around the church and told me I was going to go to hell and stuff. It was, like, really freaked me out and made me be rebellious against Christianity. <coughs> <clears throat> all right, cool. Come here, doggy. Come here. It's okay. Come here. Look, I bought these little dog beds for down here so they can lay down here. Come here. All right, I'm going to get back to this quote of that big, huge window cleaning job. You are, you are not religious. You are, you are a follower of Jesus and his word only, not religion. Yeah, so for those of you, <clears throat> this is the final thing I'll say about the whole Jesus thing. When you read the Bible, the... The words that are printed in the color red, that's what Jesus said. And if you actually just read him, like, this dude was the law. What he spoke, like, <clears throat> so basically, people would confront Jesus. Like, they would try to get him to stick his foot in his mouth. Uh, is it the Pharisees? And they would say things to him to try to get him to backpedal on what he said because, oh, dude, he was he was amazing, bro. So they would get in a circle and they would, they, so Jesus, if this, this, and this, then what do you think about this? And they thought they had him stumped, right? And then Jesus would pause and he'd be like, What do you think about this, this, and this? And then all of them would just be like, You win. <laughs> they were, he would just, dude, he would crush people with his very words, bro. He would say something, and everybody would just like, Because everything he spoke was calibrated in pure living truth. And if you read what he said, and if you feel what he said, when you read the Bible, you are ingesting the words of the Holy Spirit into you. You are eating spiritual food, and it is literally changing your consciousness. Do you hear me? It changes you when you read it. I stand behind that. Amen. So, yes. All right, later.